Lewis Michael Trabun's RV Center here to congratulate you on your 2024 J Flight SLX 262 RLS. I'm gonna walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a couple things to take into consideration when you're parking this. On your campsite, I want you to leave plenty of room for that awning. On your off campsite, besides your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are gonna be. Your power is going to plug in all the way on the rear of the rig, actually. Not on either side. It'll plug in right there, right in the middle of the back. And then your docking station is going to be up here toward the front. There's your fresh water for campsites, or city water for campsites. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsites. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing you want to do is level your unit. Your trailer comes with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply retract to lower, extend to raise it up. Now should you lose power, that hand crank right over there we're going to use on your stabilizing jacks. We'll get right up underneath here and get this up and down should you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery post every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose going down the road. Once we've got our unit level, next thing we'll do is stabilize it. All four corners of the unit got these scissor stabilizing jacks and a three quarter inch hand crank. You can use a drill gun or impact driver. I recommend not an impact driver. It can pull all this apart in here. So just use a drill gun or just hand crank. It's not far. I'm also going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris. Uh, keep them from sinking into the hot black top in the summer. A really good investment. Use your 10% off coupon. Grab a four pack of those. Put them down underneath these and run these down on top of them just until they're taunt. So once we've got some resistance on our hand crank and it feels like it's going to start lifting the unit, stop. Remember, our unit's already level. We're just stabilizing it. Get all four of them down. We've got our unit level and stable. We can hook up our power and water. Again, your power cord is going to plug in all the way in the rear back here. Big, long 30-amp cord. Where these go in now is they go in, say, about 10 o'clock and turn it to the right. Put your black washer on. Now, should you need to plug into a 110, in your convenience pack will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer in case you need to ever plug this into a 110 somewhere, throw that on the other end. Got your power hooked up, and just hook up our water. Two ways to put water in here. At campsites, we're going to use city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. When it comes to your convenience pack, it's going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. And go ahead and turn that hose on. Now you may want to, I don't know if you've opened this up, your pressure release valve, say you've had that opened up and dumping it the last time, make sure that's closed before you turn that on. But go ahead and turn that on. And then we're going to go inside and open up our slide. The reason we want to open up our slide is we want to get inside and turn on all of our water taps. Up sinks, showers, turn all them on, get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Then you can shut them off and you're all set to camp. Now let's say you're going to take this dry camping. In that case, over here on your campsite, just above your tires, is your fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can simply gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Do not leave this unattended while you're filling it up. Once it's full, put that cap back on there. And then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to the city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're all set to camp with power and water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. Continue here on the campsite. We'll go inside here shortly. Underneath our fresh water, this low point drain is gonna be our fresh water drain. That big white handle right there is gonna dump that. Up above this, we're set up for a TV. We got 110 and cable out here. Again, your fresh water. That's a uh, exhaust for your hood vent. Got a couple outdoor speakers. Our main low point drains. Should be two of them right up underneath there. We'll dump those when leaving the campsite. 
um, access door to our uh, bedroom. I'll tell you on your awnings, you do have a pitch adjust. Just pull down on this side here, and that will tilt your awning in a light rain if you want to run the rain away from your camping area. These are recommended for shade, not for heavy winds or rain. Bring them in those cases, save yourself the trouble. Big pass through storage here. Your propane does come with a cover. It's on a regulator, so if you point it toward the tank you wish to be using, lefty loosey to open. Again, up front, a power tongue jack. Battery post, a hitch work. Coming around to our off camp side, the other side of our storage. Coming over here, we've got our hot water heater again. That will always remain on. You'll turn this on indoors once you're uh, unwinterized and ready for uh, camping. Hot and cold shower out here. City water. Black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks here. Flue for a furnace. A few things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Um, two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of it. It does get hot. I sell bug guards for those too. If you have one of those at the store and have that installed. Um, you've got your wiper seals here. They've got a spray that you can spray on those. Grab a can of that. That'll keep that nice and pliable over the years. Add to the longevity of the life of this. If you're smart and got a slide topper on this one. Back here, you've got a cable satellite input. On the rear here, you're prepped for your backup camera. A ladder as well. Again, our power. Spare tire with a cover. Keep that cover on there. That keeps that from dry rotting over the years. Well, it covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. You got this lock here, wind lock, to keep that from slamming open and close in high winds coming up inside the unit first thing i always like to point out is your fire extinguisher just make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency just ahead of that is going to be your carbon monoxide and propane detector this is how you want those chairs for travel that's the only way you can be able to tuck them in there and still have you be able to get your slide in and out these are all one touch lighting. I'm gonna turn and go up the wall here to your control panel. So down here shows your battery, fresh water. That's the one I said to hold down when you're filling up your potable water, black and gray tanks. Down here's where you turn on the water pump to utilize that fresh water. Uh, exterior awning light and interior lights on your awning. You only wanna run that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that bar. If you hold that extend down, that will continue out and start to run itself up onto itself and run itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you only run it out as far as you need to. As I run that back in, reach up and shut off those lights and talk about the slide controller next to that. We'll utilize that when closing the unit up. Coming into the kitchen here, you got a couple of 110s and charging ports. And as this comes in, I would tell you that these little slam locks work best when gently slammed. All right, coming up to the unit here, you know you've got this storage underneath here. This will jackknife down into a bed or put it back. And pull this part down for cup holders. Our table will wiggle up and remove from these bars. Remove the bars. Set your table on these four lips here. Put your black cushions on top. Other small little sleeping quarters. Uh, coming up in here, you're prepped for a TV. There's a backer here for a mount. Up here is where you plug in your TV. Just make sure that that green light button is pushed and on. That is your antenna. Sound system here, I don't know if I'll pick up anything in this metal building, but really nice, nice sound systems, these IRB technologies. AM, FM, Bluetooth, there you go. And the Dell is coming up next on WHA. So indoors and outdoors. 
horrible. Uh, again, nice sound system, AM, FM, Bluetooth, auxiliary. Touch it once to mute it, or hold it in to shut it off. There's a remote for that. Continuing around in our living room here is our thermostat. Two controls here. There's auto, cool, and heat. I, I'm sorry, three. Uh, we're on cool right now to get your AC to kick on. There's a quick dump for that. If you close that, it forces more air through these and through the rest of the unit. It's hot in the kitchen. Cool it off quick. All right, now we're shut. I'm gonna circle through to off. Generally, these shut off rather quickly. And then when I go into heat, you'll notice that after I shut the heat off, it'll take a minute or two for that fan to shut off. There it goes. Now I'm gonna go through to heat. Get that up to 90 there. Where's my heat exhaust? Heat return. Oh, there they go. Now I'm gonna go to off on that. And you'll hear that it does take you just a couple of minutes for that to cycle through. Our fridge, controls for that right here and the freezer. Self-explanatory microwave. You got a light and fan above our cooktop. Uh, press these in. Hit your spark here. And that will light them when your gas is on. Same thing on your oven. Push and hold your pilot there. Hit your spark here. And that will light it. And then turn it to your desired temperature. Just make sure you got that open. Keep an eye on what's going on. Sink. Plumbing. There's your access panel. Just keep an eye on it. If you travel a lot in this and you're bouncing a house up and down the road, keep an eye on things. Make sure nothing wiggles loose over time. Your water pump is behind this one here for winterizing. Turning back around, heading back into our bathroom. We've got a shower here that we want to make sure these are closed for travel. There's our return for our heat still running. Got a hand crank open vent here in the bathroom. Here's where you turn on your hot water heater when it's full of water. There's your lighting. Again, more plumbing and an access panel to get to it. Very important having this snapped. Same thing in the bedroom here. Make sure that this bedroom door is snapped open for travel. Keep this from hurting too much here. Prep for a TV in the bedroom. Your cable on 110 up there. 110 on each side of your bed and some storage underneath. I need some nice hub hydraulics now so you don't have to hold it up. Our separate entryway into the bedroom. Just remember, keep it locked when you're not using it. Uh, I'm looking for a smoke alarm out here in the ceiling. There it is. And that about covers everything in here. It's like, like we're getting ready to leave the campsite and close the unit up. Of course, most importantly, on these chairs here, we wanted to get them turned sideways and snapped in with our safety trap straps. Then I come to my control panel and shut off my interior lights. Now I know every other light that is lit up in the unit is a one-touch light that I need to shut off individually. All throughout the unit, do that from last. Give us some light on the way out. Again, locking our doors, securing this door. So after all these lights are off, I now know I can come back to my control panel. Oh, I see what I left on. Turn on the interior lights in here. So I say doors and drawers. Walk through your unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed, especially these. We do not need these open and the slide catching on it and ripping your doors off 
also when you arrive if you can look in and see if maybe them might have popped out keep an eye on them when you're opening up this slide to your chairs slide in bottom's always going to come in first because that's where the mechanism is getting clearance on the chairs and the importance of having those doors closed down there You can hear a little noise here. That's the slide mechanism saying I'm in all the way. Get your finger off the button. Shut off our interior lights and exit the unit. Now, most important thing on these steps, whether you're bringing them up or down, is to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, you'll see that'll catch on this as you come up. These are some heavy steps. You do have Adjustable by pulling back on these. Lock that in there. Now, before you leave the dump station, and I say that in case you go, you're going to go inside and check the levels of your tanks, we're going to lock and deadbolt this door, lift and turn that. That's how we want to travel after we leave the dump station. All right, if we are out dry camping, we're going to come over here on our campsite and dump our fresh water tank. The big white handle. Bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on home or to the nearest dump station, whatever we're in need of. If we're at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable. Bring up our stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. That's the dump station parked accordingly. Your dump is about 10 feet behind the front of your unit here, maybe about seven. But uh, anyway, there's your dump. You got a 10 foot hose, comes your convenience pack. Park accordingly, hook that up, and pull your black holding tank. That's going to be your sewage. When it sounds like that's no longer draining, go inside, check the level of your black tank. Come back out here, leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and hook up to this tank flush. Put that hose in there, again emphasizing with that handle open. Turn that on and let it run for a good five minutes. Guy behind you can wait five minutes. For, he's on vacation. When that's done... Close that up, make sure all that washout water you just put in there has drained. Then close your black and pull your gray. Usually when my grays are draining, I will come around and dump our low point drains. That's gonna be these two knobs right up underneath there. When that gray is all done, we're gonna remove that hose I'll close the gray. Close the gray handle, remove the hose, and conveniently, more importantly, sanitarily, store it right here. And head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this J-Flight for many years to come. Happy camping.